So this is the first class of First Peter. And um, as usual, we're not going to start with First Peter. <clears throat> we're going to just have some scriptures that look at the man first, because I truly, truly believe that um, you're not really going to fully understand <clears throat> some of the things that he gets into unless you understand the man and what he went through. And you know many of the things, but I think that um, I think it would be good to go to read through those scriptures um, <clears throat> pertaining to him first off. And then I think it would be good to, to uh, somewhere like somewhere along the line, once we start getting into the epistle, the letter of First Peter, to read them again, and you'll get a whole new perspective. Okay, um, <clears throat> we all know that he had his share of problems and mess ups and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, the good thing is, is that those things ended up helping to form him and to bring him, um, well, you know, I mean, honestly, I think more highly of Peter after just spending so much time in First Peter that, that I just can't even tell you, I respect the man deeply. And, um, you know, bef you know, I guess, you know, it's like you read so much of Paul, and you know that he's really laying out the revelation of Christ and and the cross and all these things, <clears throat> but um, but the Lord did a work in him, and it's and <laughs> it's a good work. <clears throat> so let's look at some scriptures outside of First Peter, but looking at Peter. So to do that, let's go to John chapter one. You say, wait a minute, You're going to John? That's about him? No, this is going to be. Uh, eventually here about Peter, but we want to look at some things <coughs> leading up to it. <coughs> we're, going to, we're going to start at verse 29. <coughs> the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. <coughs> This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Okay, so he's, John is saying that he has come. The reason why he's there is to make Jesus manifest to Israel. All right. <clears throat> And the way that he starts that is he starts talking about Jesus as the Lamb of God. He seeth Jesus, but he says, behold, the Lamb of God. Okay. Um, verse 32, and John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt See the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. This is a pretty, pretty packed um, little record that he has put down here because, um, and it's, it's that way when you understand the simple thing that I've already said, and that is... <clears throat> That he doesn't start off calling Jesus Jesus. He starts off calling him the Lamb of God. Okay? Now, you sort of know that. But look at that in relationship to, uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, uh, I saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Okay, well, this is one of the first mentions, really, of the Trinity, and certainly in the New Testament. Um, and and uh, he's sort of saying, 
What I saw was a dove on a lamb. And the dove was confirming the lamb. Okay? And then he says, uh, and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but that he sent me to baptize the water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So is that saying the Lamb is the one who baptizes us with the Holy Ghost? What well, kind of is? It's not, it's not going off on, well, Jesus of Nazareth is, or Jesus uh, this or that is. It's still sticking with the context that he's only used the lamb in this, in this portion here. Now, if you want to take that out further, if you want to take it out further, go to the, go to the first verse of the first chapter of John, uh, and, and then it gets into, in the beginning was the word, and it's talking about Jesus, but he's not using the name Jesus again. <clears throat> and starts again expressing things about him in the context of Jesus being the word okay and that's easy to search out you just take your little bible and you go in the beginning was the word words with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning of god all things were made by him it's not saying jesus it's saying him as the word now <clears throat> he's gotten to a place um that he is expressing the one before us, as it were, is the lamb, is the lamb. And uh, so, and then uh, verse 34, and I saw and bear record that this is, this is the son of God. Didn't say the son of God is this. I mean, wouldn't that be, you know, the son of God is king of kings. No, 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 this lamb, this is the Son of God. You see, I mean, there's, there are things, the way they're laid, it's, it's, it's like the wood being laid in order. And we're going to be consumed on this altar of reality. And he's laying that forth so that we're, we don't just, we're not just readers, we're, we're scripture searchers. You know, we're not tourists touring <laughs> during the Bible, we are diligently wanting reality. You know, uh, Jason, I appreciated you reading scripture. You read it to two or three people. Um, because what a great way to start the class, first of all. Sh sharing the word, having seen something in the word. Uh, wanting to communicate something that you got that's touching you to other people. Well, I'm not trying to call him out or say that, you know, uh, he's perfect because he's not. I've known him for a long time. <laughs> but I know one thing, I like that. You know, I like that. And I like that, that it means something. You know, I like it when I see that it means something. We, we see something of the Lord instead of just what we've been taught, whether it's by me or anybody else. <clears throat> so, all right, now let's go to verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. So what you have here is um, you have Jesus still as the Lamb of God, okay? He's still that uh, as far as in name. Now, when it talks about who it is, it says Jesus, but John's not calling him Jesus. The, the, does that make sense? John's not doing that. This is the writer is saying, and he see Jesus walking, which means he could have said, hey, Jesus, you're the Lamb of God. Or, hey, disciples, Jesus is the Lamb of God. We didn't do that. 
because something has affected him. And, and John's got two disciples right there with him, and John's talking to them. This time, no sin, no, no sin you know, uh, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. This time, several verses down, the first one was verse 29. This is verse 36, or 30, 36. <clears throat> and um, John is maybe, in a certain sense, the only truly called person on the planet at that point. Jesus is, but Jesus is more than called, folks. He's, he's the Alpha and the Omega, okay? He created calling and the Word. <laughs> so John is called. His disciples are following him for a reason. And John is trying to express something that is real to him. He saith, Behold the Lamb of God, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay? So that's, uh, that's good, except for um, this says, and this is the narrator, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they, follow, they followed Jesus. But in the truth of the story, the name Jesus has not been brought up. They're following the Lamb. It's undeniable if you look at it close enough. All right. So Jesus turns. You know, Jesus is a solo lamb cruising down the streets of Jerusalem or wherever. And his, he, he feels these two people coming behind him. And he turns around and says, what are you seeking? What seek ye? What are you seeking? What a great question. What a great question. I mean, wouldn't it be interesting if in his mind he's thinking, are you seeking me as the lamb? And then if they said yes, and then he said, are you seeking me as the lamb that's going to take away your sins and make you where you won't go to hell and remove your guilt and da 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 da? Or are you seeking me as the lamb, as a disciple of the lamb? One who, disciple means learner, right? We are, we were John's learners but John pointed us to you. So Jesus wants to know, what are you seeking? What's really your motivation in coming after me? So, um, they say unto him, or said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being by interpreted master, where dwellest thou? Okay, so the first thing they say is, Master, but are they calling the Lamb Master? Because, see, disciples, disciples back then had masters. Did you know that? They had masters. That's teachers. Or can I give you the Jewish word they have here? Rabbis. I'm sure it was very different than it is today. But the point was that they had someone from whom they were learning and could they be saying could they be following the context and the <clears throat> word uses and be saying to the lamb master you know i mean lambs usually have masters what do they call shepherds shepherds but they're talking to a lamb and calling him master <clears throat> And they say, where dwellest thou? Okay. All right. That, what a great question for Jesus. Because they're supposed to be where he dwells eventually. You know what I mean? It's, it, we're his vessels. We're his temple. You know. <clears throat> and um, 
they're going to be shocked when they're going to dwell in him and he's going to dwell in them eventually. They're going, gosh, I was just wanting to know your street address. <laughs> you know? yeah. Verse 39, he saith unto them, come and see. Okay. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. So they came, they saw, but they abode with him. All right. So <clears throat> what is this little, this little, okay. They came, okay, so we're here. They saw where he dwelt, but they abode with him. All right, so what does that mean? That day. Well, I think they abode with him. I think that they spent time listening to him. I think they were interested in him. I think they were really, you know, it, 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 they didn't go, well, this is stupid. This guy don't know nothing. You know what I mean? And go, well, we got to go, you know, <laughs> like that. You know, no, they didn't have someone that could call you on the cell phone and say, okay, I'll get you out of this, you know. And you go, oh, I got to I gotta go, you know. <clears throat> They stayed, they abode, they, they were interested, they were moved possibly. Were they moved? Well, yeah, read the rest of it. <laughs> um, um, they came where he, uh, he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother. Okay, so <clears throat> you, you know what he's going to say next, right? Well, then read it if you don't. <laughs> but he's, he is, um, he's been there since 10 o'clock. <laughs> and the first thing he does is not go eat or oh, I need to do this or I've got that to do and you know the first thing he does is he goes to his older brother the writer of our book that we're studying and he said we found the Messiah we found him Get the right words here. We have found the Messiah's which is being interpreted the Christ. <clears throat> so Simon Peter's first introduction to Jesus was his younger brother Andrew, who apparently had been committed. You know, we know Peter was a <clears throat> fisherman, right? <clears throat> or plumber, which was it? And uh, <clears throat> they, um, so, and we know that until Peter just literally came up and said, follow me, right? He dropped his nets and he went. But apparently uh, he was a dedicated fisherman because when he, when he thought it was all over with, he went back to Galilee and he started fishing again. And, and uh, when it says in the, what is it, First John 21 or right in there, when it says in the Greek, I go fishing, built into the grammar of that is, I'm going back to fish. I'm going back to my occupation. <clears throat> okay. It's what he knew. It's what he did, what he, what he was good at. So he didn't immediately just jump on the bandwagon with Andrew. <clears throat> but we know, that, we know that several things that happened with Andrew, and I don't know if you've ever searched that Andrew, but it, you know, it wouldn't, it, it, it's, it, it's not going to consume a lot of your time. But there's some good things that happened, you know. You find out Philip and Andrew like to hang out. You know, there's some things, you know, you go, oh, whoa, do we have some buds here? You know, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so Peter's first introduction to Jesus is 
being explained as the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Is that significant? Yeah, it's going to be real significant. I don't think it registered in his little head. I don't. I don't think it registered at that point. Um, But when you realize that the things that he writes in here in this book, you realize some of these things, they really affect you because you're going, this guy had seeds put in the in him in the very beginning. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to um, um, let's go to uh, John 10. Okay. So here in John 10, um, we've actually got sort of an ongoing conversation that's going on here. Uh, pretty much most of John was covering just a few days. Leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. And um, probably one of the high points in Peter's life that he had been walking with the Lamb for it's three and a half years now. That we're jumping now. He'd been walking with the Lamb. He'd been watching him. He'd been hearing him. He'd been hearing things. Probably the high point of his disciple career is when he was able to stand up to Jesus and say, I will give, I will lay down my life for you. That's what that hat reminds me of. Hey, Rocky. (laughs) And and just the, the oomph that must have been in him. Right? And you can hear it in him. You can just read the story and go, dude, this guy believes it. You know? And he's probably a little disappointed that Jesus didn't go, wow, dude. And then turn to the the 11 and go, now that's what I'm talking about. So, uh, John 10, and we're going to first read verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay. So Jesus is saying, look, I know what the Father's like. I know his substance. I know know what he's made of. I know what uh, floats his boat. (laughs) I know what, you know, gets him going. And he knows what. What gets me going, which is what gets him going. And he says, uh, even so I, I, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Therefore doth my, this is, now I'm jumping to verse 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Okay, so he is... um, Jesus is speaking of a relationship with the Father that is a, oh gosh, I wish I had a brand new terminology for that, which involves an um, interchange between them that is real and it is, um, it is, Solid and it is um, full of heart for one another. And so much so that, uh, and, and that's what's, you say, well, where are you getting this, you know, the, this 
turns on the father or whatever that, uh, that he lays down his life. Verse 17 says it. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. He loves it. <laughs> the father loves it. And Jesus loves giving the father what he wants. But it's not hard for them because they're of that substance. You understand? And so the, you could say the father expects it, but the way this is worded is there's no expectation. It's just I, the father knows me and I know him. You see that? It's, there's no expectation on that. And there is just, look, we know each other. There's no question where this goes. There's no question about it. It's not complicated. It's not, you know, well, you know, Jesus to the Father, am I going to have to give up my ministry? <laughs> Something like that, you know. <clears throat> um, so as I said, this is an ongoing conversation. So go to chapter 13 now. <clears throat> uh, you know, I don't know... But I would assume that if you started in John 10, and you can start earlier than that, but if you started in John 10 and you went all the way up to the crucifixion, all the things that were said up to that time, not talking about all the things that happened or in the Garden of Gethsemane, just what was said, if you just took that and you put a timer on it and you just read and you walked as if you're walking with Jesus, it would go pretty quick. It's not like, you know, well, three days later. I mean, it was all the conversation that's there would go pretty quickly. All right. So, uh, John 13, <clears throat> let's do, let's start at verse 34. Jesus speaking again. Now, remember, remember who is in, who is being spoken to here? Peter. And the disciples, they are the ones he's talking to. Okay? So this is all, this is all prep. This is all whatever. And what we're going to see in, um, we'll, we'll see a little bit of it here in John 13 and in John 15. We might actually get a little bit of an awakening of what, John 15 is actually talking about in the scriptures that we're going to read. I mean, anybody want an awakening to the Word of God? Uh, to hear it different than you've always read it and go, oh my God, that's what it's saying. And, and maybe even, my God, how could I have missed that? Or, you see what I'm saying? Or, my Lord and my God. That's what, that's what Peter said, you know, remember? Anyway, <clears throat> so... Um, a new commandment I give uh, unto you, that you love one another, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Okay. Uh, we could say, well, it's a little redundant there, but it's not redundant. It's, it's emphasized. Um, love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. <clears throat> okay. Then he says... By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Now, okay, now let's consider that. Okay. It, has anybody ever been in another church where this scripture was read? Anybody? Okay. By this shall all men know that you love one another. And so the thing goes, you know, it's going to be a witness to the world when they see us loving one another. Okay. But is that, is that what Jesus meant here? And is that what the scripture is about to tell us that he meant? Okay. That you love one another. Verse 37, Peter saith unto him, Lord, um, why can I not follow thee? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Peter understands it as laying down his life. He doesn't understand it as, you know, give one another a holy hug. It's clear. 
He understands it that way, and we should have. You know, there should have been no drifting. Anybody get drifting? Drifting into ooey-gooey love. Get, you know, drifting into, you know, that. Jesus is calling for us to, and you know that. Uh, who here out loud can quote 1 John 3.16? Do it. By this perceive you God's kind of love. what I'm talking about see tonight he's the golden boy <laughs> tomorrow he'll mess up and I'll have to pray with him but we'll, we'll get on down the road together <laughs> all right um, but yeah it's a sacrificial love uh, but you could you understand that when he says by this perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us you see what I mean? There's no question. You don't need to know the Greek. You just need to look at the cross. <laughs> By this. This slaughtered lamb perceived me the love of God, and I ought to do that. Okay. So Peter, <clears throat> he's been around a while. <laughs> He's been around a little bit. So he knows what Jesus is talking about and probably remembers just a few verses up where Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep and the Father loves me because I lay down my life. He probably remembers that and goes... The the father loves Jesus because he gives himself like this. He'll lay down his life. Don't you think he, he the concept probably, not, not the full revelation of him, but don't you think the concept probably got in and he's going, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right, you know? And then Jesus says, you know, by the, you know, here's how, you know, I want you to love. And he says, um, if you have love one for another, then they will know you're my disciples. And Peter jumps up. And he says, I will lay down my life for thy sake. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, first, in 1 first John 3, 16, we have the advantage of hearing him say, by this talking about the cross by this perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us right now Peter probably has a very watered down lukewarm half hearted fence riding version of what it means to lay down his life how many of you think maybe you probably still do okay <clears throat> Uh, I'm sure I do, and yet I'm preparing. You know, I'm I'm loading my pockets. You know what I mean? I'm 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 wanting that. <clears throat> so um, I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered, "Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake?" Okay, so. All Jesus did was took I will out of Peter's mouth and put wilt thou. I will lay down my life for thy sake. Wilt thou lay down my, thy life for my sake? You know. <clears throat> uh, and that's where I, I mentioned this. That's where I'm pretty sure that um, Peter is maybe if he's really gathered some of the concepts that we've already read in this, this whole conversation that's going on here if he's gathered some of the concepts of that he would go well why you know and I'm, maybe as a fisherman he didn't think this far but he could go well why then um <clears throat> uh what you said therefore doth my father love me because i lay down my life 
Why don't you love me? Because I'm talking about laying down my life for you. He loves you. He loves you, Jesus, because you'll lay down your life for the Father. Then why can't or why won't you love me when I say I'll lay down my life for you? Does that make sense? Yes. I don't think that's complicated, but maybe, you know, try, trying to string together some thoughts here. <laughs> and um, and if that was us probably in that state, we I'm pretty sure we would kind of go, well, that, you know, I'm trying to do the very thing that you want. You know, it's almost like he could say, <clears throat> look, Andrew came to me three years ago, three and a half years ago, if I were, yeah, three and a half years ago. And he said, John the Baptist called you the Lamb of God and didn't call you Jesus. And they followed the Lamb, and he, y'all shared up to late at night. And then he came home, the first person he grabbed was me, and he shared that. And I, I have in me the early, you know, I can hear Peter, I've, I have in me the early realities of I will lay down my life, you know, as a lamb. And now I'm trying to put it into action, you know. I mean, you know, he could even look around and go, you know, have you checked out Bartholomew lately? I mean, he's doing nothing. He's got no... <laughs> you know, uh, oomph to him, and he he hardly ever does anything for anyone else. And I'm saying I'll lay down my life. So you know that should be high up there compared to these lackeys, <laughs> the rest of the disciples. <clears throat> I'm sure Peter never would think that, but I have, to, I have to frame some things for you so that you can understand when he starts talking later in his epistle. And, and so, and you know, I mean, remember he's the one, and I don't have the scriptures here, but he's the one that, that you know, told Jesus, you know, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And you know, Jesus said, well, I, you know, as soon as, he says that. Remember, Peter should have remembered that John called the Lamb the Son of God. So Peter says, You are the Lamb, you are the Son of the Living God. And he says, Okay, and he starts from that point on, starts talking about going to the cross and everything. And Peter says, What? Not so, not so Lord. You don't say not so to the Lord. But anyway. So he's, he says that, and Jesus says, Peter, get behind me, Satan, for thou savorest the things that be of men and not the things that be of God. Okay. So maybe at this point he's going, I'll lay down my life. <laughs> you know? I mean, maybe, maybe this is it. You know, he's like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake again. <clears throat> no, you didn't, but you're making... This mistake now, because you have no clue what that means. And the proof of that is when I start, they start slapping me around and stuff, you take off. All right. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Peter says, I will lay down my life for thy sake comprehending that love means lay down your life. 1 John 3, 16, again. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Three times, okay? All right, Jesus, are you picking on me? You know, I'm try I've, I've actually gathered the concepts and I'm trying to put them into action here. And you're, you know, you're going, well, you, you know, dude, it's, you know, it won't even be three ticks on the clock or whatever before you're denying me again, uh, once and then again and then again. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say what he must have thought. 
He could have gone into depression. He could have, he could have gotten huffy. What would you have done? You know, well, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God, but you're not a very good one. <laughs> you know, who, who knows what we can come up? We are dangerous. <laughs> All right. So um, now uh, John 15. Remember, this isn't that far off from John 10 and John 14. In your Bible, you may think it is, but it is not. All right, John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So you, do you see, anybody see a continuing theme in John and throughout these things? And it's the theme. It's the subject. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, so here goes Jesus, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. All right. So Jesus is talking about greater love. All right? Okay. So, you know, uh, we talk about the love of God, but there's a greater love than our version of the love of God. So he says, and so here's where maybe we'll read some a few things a little differently here. Uh, uh, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. Do anybody see that? Did you, do you see that? No, we don't. We go, Jesus is sitting there and he's teaching and then he puts his arms around and goes, you guys are my friends. That's the way we've read it. You have read it that way too. Anybody not read it that way? That's the way we've read it. It's right there. Greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friends. That means you're, you're going to lay down your life if you're there a friend. I have called you friends. Undeniable. That's at least twice in just the simple reading of this stuff that we can see that we have misunderstood or not seen. So we're going... You know, we're going, when, when he's saying, you know, guys, this whole thing is that we do lay down. Not we, not we say it, Peter, but we do it. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, you know. And he's, go, and he's going, and there is no greater love. I mean, can you hear, hear Jesus saying this? I mean, there is no greater love that a man would lay down his life for his friends. I have called you friends. You're supposed to be the ones that are going to be laying down your life. There it is. Or, oop, there it is. <clears throat> All right. Um, verse 15, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, because you know what I'm doing. I'm going to lay down my life. Do you see that? He's not saying, well, you know, you were servants and I just told you what to do because you didn't know what was going on. But now you know the depths of all the things of God. You know the Bible. You know ministry. Uh, you know what I want, you know. And I've called you friends because all, uh, for all things that I have heard of my Father, which is that spirit of laying down your life, all things that I have heard of my Father the family spirit, I have made known unto you. The things I learned from Father, I've made known to you, the family spirit and the family way that we proceed. And I'm calling you friends because I've made known to you, I've showed you, I've, I've called you. But I have called you friends. Okay? All right. So, let's, let's go ahead and go through some of these other verses. We've still got 
about 15 minutes. Matthew 26. <clears throat> so now we get to um, to, to Peter's denials. Okay? Right? Y'all know that that's where we're heading, right? Okay. So we're, what are we actually getting to? We're getting to the real life situation, the moment. Okay, all the teaching, all the, all the teaching has been taught. All of the sharing back and forth has been done. All of the little examples, you know, well, you know, there's a poor beggar here. I'm going to give you a Reese's Pieces, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, Bartholomew goes, that's really, that's really special that you did that. <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, and Jesus is just going. <laughs> and they're patting themselves on each other's back, you know, and going, this is, boy, what a great, great group we got here. <laughs> you know. Um, so now, you know, it's all coming down. Um, Jesus is fixing to disappear. And there, you know, and here's, here's the way you look at this. <clears throat> Jesus is fixing to go, okay? And he says, I go away. And, and he's like, okay, okay, fellas, we've been together for three and a half years. I'm leaving this with you now. I mean, surely at least one of them was going, well, that's not a good idea. <laughs> I think all of them would be. I think they're all continually hearing Jesus say stuff, and they're going, well, I am nothing like that, you know. Don't call me friend because I'd like to be that, but you know what I'm saying? That those things could be there and we're going wondering and worrying and you know and he's really going to go away they're going to kill him they just grabbed him this thing's almost over and yet it's not supposed to be over it's supposed to keep going and he expects us to do it because we're his friends <laughs> all right so the moment of reckoning here, Matthew 26, verse 65. <clears throat> then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, and this is talking about Jesus right here, saying, he hath spoken blasphemy. Okay, this is the Son of God has not spoken blasphemy against God. But there's the accusation. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. You're we're, we're not just going to kill you. You are guilty of death. There's a difference, especially when you're the one under the gun and everybody's yelling, kill him, and you're the one that's <laughs> failed and you're the one that this is mad. You understand? <clears throat> uh, then did they spit in his face. Now, Guess what? Guess who's watching all this? Then they spit in his face and they buffeted him. And, and when, I, when I was reading this uh, today, actually, I thought of the skit that you guys do and how <clears throat> I remember where I was sitting when y'all were putting it on for the gathering. And I remember that um, uh, Gideon was Jesus. And I remember... You guys really did a great job of buffeting. I mean, y'all were knocking him all over the place. Y'all remember that? You really did. I mean, I mean, you had the feeling that it wasn't a skit, that you could see what that would mean. And that was good. That was good. Um, they're pushing him around and slapping him around and spitting in his face. <clears throat> um, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. So Peter's watching people spit in Jesus' face, the one he said, you're the son of God, and seeing him take the palm of their hand and just slap him. I don't think it'd be mild. This was mainly Roman soldiers doing a bunch of this, and they're just slapping him. 
Well, imagine Jesus just having the fire slapped out of him. Verse 67, then did they, sp or verse 68, saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, which is the Messiah, who is he that smote thee? Now Peter sat without in the, pala uh, in the palace, and a damsel came up unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. And he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid, these maids are really troublemakers. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> you know? You, you young women are problems, okay? <clears throat> okay, um... Uh, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, one of them, one of them. You're one of them. That's, a, that's an indictment. Okay? But that's also what he, for three and a half years he was trained to, do, to be, right? But now he's about to show that right now he's not one of them, <clears throat> okay? Um, one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Behold, before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. <clears throat> okay. Um, what, what sort of significance would this have in a man's life who was called to be with Jesus and had failed like this? I mean, you know, I mean, can you see that that would, that would sh strike so deep that one day he would be able to pull out a pen and pen something that is life changing. <clears throat> um, Uh, so I wrote, Peter was a man who knew what it was like to deeply fail the Lord in the crisis. In the crisis. But this isn't just any crisis. Right? This is not just any crisis. This is the, the crisis. You know, this is the one where we give back to him what he's given to us. Amen? This is it. This is the one. This is, this is you know, we talk about training, you know. We talk about accelerated, um, you know, we, we uh, you know, some, I've had people say, well, this accelerated Christian training school, this is a three-year Bible school. I said, well, how would you feel about three years in the Bahamas? Oh, I would love that. <laughs> okay, how would you feel about three years of being with Jesus? Okay, how would you feel about a lifetime being with Jesus after, you know, this life? Is it going to be like the Bahamas? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> no, no, you know, uh, uh, the example I use with that kind of concept is <clears throat> um, one day I we were, let's see, we were in church and they were taking the offering and uh, I handed, <clears throat> I had a $20 bill to one of my daughters. I said, put this in the offering plate. He said, Dad, you can put that much in? And I said, yeah. So <clears throat> later that week, I think it was just within a few days, we we go to the mall and they jump out and that same daughter says, Would you, you know, are you gonna give me some money or something? So I pull out a twenty and she says, Is that all you're gonna give me? Does anybody see a problem with that? Now they've grown up to serve the Lord and probably better at better at it than me, but it really shows something of our mentalities, of what's important. And you see, 
I never mentioned that to my daughter. But if the Lord had have stopped and just said, now, let's look at this. Let's see what really where your values are, you know. <clears throat> so that we could be confronted with that. But even that, if he stopped her and did that, it wouldn't be enough. The crisis has to cut so deep that you weep bitterly. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, bitterly. You're not bitter at Jesus. You're bitter at everything that you thought you knew. This disappeared, dissipated. Um, so Peter was a man who knew what it was like to deeply fail the Lord in the crisis. It is important that he is the writer of this book, 1 Peter. It's important. It's important that, that he can bring us something. Um, that we can literally hear that somebody finally gets it. Uh, that we literally can hear someone who, you know, maybe we're, we're similar. Maybe we failed him in a similar way and realize there's, there's life after this. You know, there's actually more than life. There's, there's more than staying a Christian. There's more than there is actual grasping in such a way that you could write something that for all centuries, as long as there's a Bible, somebody can read that. Well, that's, that's valuable. I'm talking about valuable, you know. You're going to give $20 to the offering? Is that all you're going to give me is $20 for the mall? <clears throat> so that's it. For tonight. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for where you want to take us. We hopefully realize that just sitting and hearing it is not going to be enough. If we don't hear it, Father, you say in your word, how should they hear without a preacher? But that is, there's also only those who hear can understand the crisis, can, can eventually, truly give to you, Jesus, friendship as you understand it. And so we ask you to make real, make real, Make it real in the word first, <clears throat> but don't leave it there. Father, don't, don't make us Pharisees by just teaching us stuff that's good and, and impressive. Jesus, in these words that we've read tonight through John, every bit of it, Father, regardless of what chapter we looked at there, every bit of it is the same heart. Jesus wants us to be willing to lay down our lives based on his spirit and his nature within us and to do it in the worst of worst of worst crisis. Father, I know in my case, I've had to fail and I had failed and I, the shame covered me and, and I couldn't get over the fact that I thought I knew this and it should have kicked in and what is wrong with me and all of this. But I said to you, Father, when I, I, I prayed and I sought you and when I felt like the Spirit had revitalized me in it, I said, bring it on again. And he did and you did and 
You made it way worse than it was the first time around, but you gave me the wherewithal by your life of your son to pass through that valley of the shadow of death and not fear evil because I was supposed to be with you in that. So I know firsthand that the failure side, and I know firsthand that you don't give up. May we not give up. May we not give in. May we not settle. May we hear your heart through the writings of Peter. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right.